Can clouds be moody? Can bugs be philosophical? Can cars be invisible? Can hair be farmed? Can trees be mindful? Can bees be inventors? Can technology be caring? Can brains be connected? Can food be downloaded? Can bushes be heard? Can apples be catalysts? Can ricks be brewing? Can wasps be artists? Can water be clothing? Can plants be entertainers? Whoa, that was a <laughs> lot of questions. Meet Jacob Fudoriansky. He is the founder and CEO of NeuroNation and has built an entire career of inquisitiveness. So, Jacob, what is at the heart of a great question? <laughs> I believe at the heart of a great question is uh, our understanding why we do what we do. So we can discover what actually makes us um, pursuing this specific question, what gives us the energy to do so. What would you say makes a question a compelling one? A compelling question, um, in my understanding, would have a real purpose. And if this question is, a, is really giving you this kind of energy, this will never actually let you go. This is what will create uh, dopamine in your brain. This is what gives you some kind of luck if you get one step closer to the maybe next question, because every question opens up uh, maybe tens of new questions. This is what gives us the drive, the, the drive for innovation, the drive for progress. So what made you decide to build your career off inquisitiveness and asking questions? I question myself, is it possible to free up uh, people's brains and minds from repetitive work? At Neuronation, we are questioning ourselves, is it possible to increase uh, the ability of people to learn more, learn faster, retain information and uh, be happier with their cognitive abilities in general. So that game we were playing earlier, we were asking lots of very bizarre and absurd questions. <laughs> what is the purpose of that game and how does that actually affect our curiosity? The purpose of the game is uh, getting more comfortable with questioning. Going further and further with every single question, we create a new linkage between our neurons. And this is why the next time we'll play this uh, kind of game, we'll be even more comfortable, probably way more efficient in, uh, in doing so. Uh, we can use this technique to look at a specific uh, task or a project from way more perspectives than we did in the past. Speaking of changing perspectives, how do you feel about going outside again and seeing what other questions we can come up with? Let's go. What do you think are the five most important questions of our time? I believe these are the questions concerning the five mega trends. Uh, the first one would be the demographic shift. So in 15 years, there will be 50% more people aged 60 and plus. The second is the accelerating urbanization. So more and more people live in cities. What does it mean for, for security, for education, logistics, resources? The third one is the socio-economic shift, which means more and more economic power goes to Southeast Asia. What does it mean for Western societies? The fourth one is uh, scarcity of resources, water, energy supplies. What we'll do with that? And the fifth one is the technological breakthroughs, artificial intelligence. How can we use it to foster our society to the best we can do? What was the toughest question you've ever had to answer? Actually, it was uh, the question regarding am I leaving the corporate world and going to entrepreneurship or not? And mm. I had a lot of disputes with my family about that. Yeah. But uh, um, I decided to follow actually my values and to uh, go into the risky entrepreneurship world. Yeah, that is a big risk. Yeah. Is it actually possible to be too curious, to be over inquisitive? I believe so, yes, definitely. The thing is about curiosity is you can ask a lot of questions, but in the mm. end you need to find some axioms, like in mathematics, where you can build up your next formulas, your next ideas, your next innovation on. So if you always actually repeat uh, the questions on the basis, you will not go forward. So there should be a time where you find the solution and then you go on. Okay, so it is possible for curiosity <laughs> to kill the cat on occasions. I believe so, yes. <laughs> If you'd like to discover which questions you'd ask, click the link to go to the Curious Elements program and start training your inquisitiveness today. 
Anyway, now we've done this, do you want to go back to the question game? And let's see how much yeah, better we were. Exactly. Can bumblebees be scientists? <laughs> Can plants be great food for us? Could plants be green in other words?